Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying Jeremiah, Yirmi, that's the prophet Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu, 4b. So this is our second um, installation on chapter 4. And I'm starting from verse 15. I'm going to read till the end of the chapter today. We had just finished verse 14, in which the prophet Yirmiyahu was speaking on his own and he had said I see this terrible destruction coming and he was begging the people please you need to clean up your act wash all this evil out of your hearts Jerusalem in order to save yourselves he saw the destruction coming and he begged the people please 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 save yourselves do something because this terrible calamity is about to occur and in verse 15 he continues what is this calamity ki kol magid midan there is a, a voice coming telling us news from the land of dan of the tribe of dan umashmia oven mehar ephraim and it is telling us news from the mountains of ephraim it's telling us news of 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 bad things of bad news bad calamities that are going to happen the image portrayed here is the image um the radak describes is when as the enemy armies are coming in, the people in the outskirts, the people in the more uh, outlying towns and villages, farms, etc., start to run towards the center, and they towards, towards Jerusalem, towards the capital, and start bringing this bad news and telling them what's going on. There's these armies coming, they're coming closer, they're starting to take out, over the towns out. This is the Kol Magid Midan. Interestingly, Yirmiyahu calls the lands of the north Dan, uh, which is uh, Tri and, and Har Ephraim. Now remember that when Yirmiyahu was speaking, the lands of Dan and Ephraim had already been destroyed by the um, by that the, 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 um, the kingdom had already been destroyed by Sancher by the Assyrians years prior, and the 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 bulk of the people, the leadership had been exiled. The kingdom was gone. However, as we mentioned numerous times, there were still people left there, and Yirmiyo is still calling those lands Dan and Ephraim because of, of traditionally who had lived there, who had been there, and the people that still remained there. It continues in verse 16. Hazkiru Lagoyim. Mention this, tell this to all the nations, tell this to the people of the world. He may Hashmiu al Yerushalayim. Behold, I want you to announce and regarding Jerusalem, tell the world what's happening. And there's a lot of translations of the rest of this verse. I'm going to go through several of them. Notsirim bo'im me'eretz ha'merchok. There are notsirim coming from a faraway land. Vayetnu al ore Yehuda kolam. And they have raised their voices against the towns of Yehuda. Now what is these notsirim? So there's several translations. Um, and how you translate Notsrim kind of leads into how you translate and explain this verse and the following uh, couple verses. Um, so first of all, Haskil, let's mention this to the Gaim. First of all, I'm going to mention what the, how the Radak and the Mitsudos read this. And that is, is that um, Hazkiru mentioned, doesn't, usually we say La Gaim means mention this to the nations. They understand this to mean announce regarding the nations and hine hashmiu al yerushalayim and and speak regarding jerusalem and then they translate notsrim which would mean the um according to the radak here it would mean um cutters or harvesters uh, like the formal language of boatsrim people that harvest crops in other words, they're coming. They're destroyers. That's who, that's who's coming. These are destroyers that are coming. Now, um, the uh, the Matsudos, on the other hand, understands them as as besiegers, people that are laying siege. From language of 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 matzor, uh, of a siege. So the besiegers are coming from a faraway land, meaning from Babylon, and they are going by and they are calling out. They are, their voices against the towns of Yehuda, which they are about to besiege. 
Um, Rashi also translates no trim as people that are about to lay siege. But either way, the Radak and Rashi and Metsudos all understand these no trim as the attackers, whether it's the cutters, the besiegers. Now, and the thing is, though, is that, and the Malbim points this out, and others point this out, that no trim usually means watchers or guardians or watchers. Um, and we've had this repeatedly in Shayahu where he uses the term in that, in that meaning. So um, some commentators understand this verse very differently and read it as follows. And this is how I, I prefer to read it because it just makes more sense and it flows better with the following verses as well. And I would read it as follows. Hazkiru lagoyim mentioned to the nations, tell the nations, announce to the world, Hine, behold, Hashmiu al Yerushalayim, give them the news about what's going on in Jerusalem. When there's a calamity, we announce it to the world, look for help. So everyone, you need to know what's going on. What's happening? No tzrimbo'im, there are watchers coming from the foreign land. In other words, we have this image, the kol magid midon, the refugees are coming from the outskirts bringing the news. And what, what does armies do? They send ahead of themselves, they send scouts, they send watchers, people that are coming to lookouts. <laughs> so they're coming. So this is about to happen. The reason why you're announcing this is the world is appealing for some help, for some aid, and, and saying there's no trim coming. The people that are running ahead of the armies to scout out the area, they're coming from a faraway place. They're obviously here for some no good. And then it continues in the next, next verse. Kishomre Sodai. When they come, they are like the guardians of fields. Hayu Allah Misaviv, they are surrounding the cities. Now, if you read like the Radak and the Mitsudos, this, this verse kind of doesn't make that much sense. Because if, if the no trim are destroyers themselves, then what does it mean when it says they they are like guardians of fields? The people that are Shomre Sodai, that guard fields are people that protect the field, not people that harm the field. So they understand it, you know, you can explain it, well, they're like besiegers that are surrounding the, the cities, like guardians surround fields. But the metaphor doesn't work that well. But if you understand notes rim as watchers that are coming to observe, that are coming to scout, then it makes a lot of sense. They surround the fields like those that watch fields, because those that watch fields are observant. They look, they watch, they see. And those are the ones that are coming now and surrounding the cities like Shomre Sodai. Ayu Allah Misaviv. Why is this? Ki osi morasa. Because she has rebelled against me, Noam Adonai, says God. The reason why the enemies are coming is because she, Jerusalem, the people of Judah, the people of Judah, have rebelled against me. Darkech, this is verse 18. Umal alayach aso elalach. It is your ways and your acts, the things that you have done, these are the things, this is the reason why it's happening. kimar. This is the result of your, of, of your evil. Or this could mean this is the evil that becomes to you, that comes, that's, that, that, that you deserve. Kimar, because you have been bitter, or because, mar, because you have rebelled. Kinoga adlibech, because it has, it, this, this, um, this punishment has come straight to your heart like with the image we had earlier the dagger to the heart this is God saying just know it is your fault this is happening not because I haven't given you chances not because I haven't given you warnings not because I haven't given you opportunities but because you have made these bad choices in verse 19 uh, the next verse we flip again from God speaking back to the prophet speaking and may I may I my 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 guts, my innards, my guts, ochila, are shaking, are are, 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 are trembling. Kiros libi homeli. Kiros libi, my 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 the 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 walls of my heart are pounding. Homeli libi, my my heart is is crying within me. Lo acherish, I cannot be silent. Remember that Yirmiyo had said before, um, you know. I see so much destruction, I must speak up myself. I have to do something. The same thing he's saying now. This I can't be silent. He calls shofar shamat. I have I can hear or or it can be heard the sound of the horn blowing, the shofar blowing. 
Shema um, Nafshi, my soul is hearing that sound. Turas Milchama, and it's not a shofar waking me up for to to. It's not the shofar of Rosh Hashanah, but rather it's this is the shofar that was heard that is heard before war as the enemy soldiers approach, blowing horns. Shever al shever nikra, one calamity after another calamity is 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 happening. This. The Radak understands the Shever al Shever to be referring to one calamity after another. First, the northern kingdom falls, and now, so soon later, the southern kingdom is about to fall. Kishu I see that the entire land is being plundered. Pitom suddenly, Shududu o Alai, my tents, in other words, our homes, our buildings, Regairio, so I, in just a moment, the clo- the cloth the um, out of which the tents and the homes are made are, are destroyed. It's it's this feeling that everything is happening so fast. Ad Masa how long do I have to look at these flags, the flags that are carried by the invading armies? Ashma'akol Shafar, how long do I have to listen to the sounds of the enemy's horns blowing? So this that was your Mio, the prophet speaking, and now in verse twenty two we flip back to God again. And God says, You just asked me Ad Masai until when do I have to see the flags? How long do I need to listen to this terrible sounds of the blowing? Well, God says, I'll tell you why. Ki avilami, my nation has been stupid. My nation has been foolish. O silo yodau, they didn't know me. They didn't spend their time looking to me. I'm the one that could save them. I'm the one that is here to help them, to save them. I'm the one that does everything to try to build them up. But instead, they didn't look to me. Banim sichalim heima, they are dumb, silly Foolish children. They aren't people that understand. They aren't people that know. Yeah. What kind of... Where do they use their brains? They use their intelligence to do evil. But they didn't... They don't even know how to do something good. This is like a kind of astounding. God is actually telling the people, calling his children foolish and, 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 and literally stupid. It's, it's kind of... I mean, which, what's better? What's worse? Is it better to say that they're smart, but they, um, but they choose to do bad? Or is it better just to say that they're stupid? So this is an, an, an old question. But over here, we have an, a, a rare instance of God calling his people foolish for, um, for going in the wrong direction. And then, again, as we've been flipping back and forth, this is almost a dialogue between the prophet and God. In verse 23, and then the next few verses, we see again, Yermio says, Yermio is saying, how long do I have to see these flags? How long do I have to see this? Then all of a sudden, Yermio starts to see something into the future. He starts to see the result of all this destruction. Now I see the land. Yes, the, the shofar is gone. The blowing is gone. The swords are gone. The trampling horses are gone. The destruction, the noise is gone. But now what do I see? I see a land, it is desolate, there's nothing in it anymore. And I look at the skies and it's dark. There's no more light in the sky. 24, I see the mountains, they're shaking, they're, they're, there's, there's, um, they're falling apart. And all of the, the hills are ruined. Instead of being full of fields and, and, and flocks of of sheep and goats and, 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 and farms growing produce, there's nothing, they're just ruined. Raisi, what else do I see? There's no more people. There's no more people. Even the birds flew away, they're gone. There's nothing left. Raisi, what else do I see? It says Jeremiah in verse 26. The farmland that was green, full of produce, is now turned into wilderness. And all of the cities of Judah, Nitzu Mipnei Adonai, have been destroyed and wrecked from from in front of God, Mipnei Charon Apo, because of God's anger. This is what we see. But then God says, yeah, so he, remember, he talked about the war and God responded that the people were foolish. He talked about what he sees in the future and this desolate, dreary, awful-looking landscape with everything gone, everyone gone. God says, because this is what God says yes the land will be destroyed it will be desolate the vision that you're seeing is awful and it will happen 
However, but don't worry, I will not completely destroy it ever. There will always be something left. There will always be something left to rebuild. However, God continues in 28. I'm going to tell you why this morning is happening. This is the reason why the land is mourning so. This is why the skies up above look so dark. Because I have spoken, I have said what my plan is. I have not changed my mind. And I will not turn back from this plan. As long as the people don't turn their mend their ways, this is the plan. This is what is going to happen. That from the sounds, remember you were talking about the sounds before, from the sounds of the riders of horses, the Rome Keshes, and from the noise being made by the archers that are shooting bows, I mean, so shooting arrows, Borachas Kol Ha'ir, the entire city will run, which is why it will be desolate. Where will they go? Ba'obe'avim, they will run and hide in the thick growth, in the fields, in the, in the thickets. Uva'kef Emolo, they'll climb up rocks to try to escape the enemy. But the entire city will be forsaken. There will be no one left. God purposely, it seems, um, takes this image of the people running and hiding. Because remember, he said, yes, you see desolation, but that doesn't mean there are no people left. There are people hiding. It's this, yes, yeah, the city will be destroyed, but also, I will not, I will not destroy it completely. And you, you the one, God points, you the one who is about to be plundered. What are you doing? Right? What do you do? When you get dressed up in these robes, and you decorate yourself with gold and jewelry, and you put uh, makeup on your eyes, you're making yourself beautiful for nothing. Ma's, the the vanity displayed, and and all in a time I'm warning you. I'm telling you something terrible is about to happen, and what do you do? You still involve yourselves in vanity. You still involve yourselves in nothing. I'm asking you to change your ways, and instead, you're you're involving yourselves in things that, that mean nothing. You're getting yourself beautiful for nothing. Why? Because the one the, the those that that that. Your your lovers, those that you you desire you, and those that you desire them, they they're disgusted with you now. They don't want you now. Instead, what they really want to do is come and kill you. This is a metaphor. It's, it's using the metaphor of a, a woman dressing for the lover, but the lover is not interested in her. In fact, he wants to harm her, which is a very powerful, powerful metaphor, and 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 really strikes you at the heart of of the vanity of of. Of, of well, it's not so much vanity even. It's 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 worse than that. It's it's just why doesn't she get the message? Why doesn't she see? You know, and it's such a painful, painful image. She's dressing up for someone that wants to hurt her, not someone that wants to love her. It's just, just very, very difficult um, uh, image to think about. But what what it's really trying to p- portray here is the people are dressing up in order to appease other nations. Remember the theme of this past few chapters often has been that the people are constantly looking everywhere else for help. They're looking to every other source for, for, for support and not to God. Those other sources that they're looking to, those other nations, instead of coming to help you, instead of coming to be your friends, what they're doing now is not they're coming to attack you and destroy you. The, um, the the unfortunately, what this is trying to show is is that is that if they if if the woman in this image if she got the message and understood you, um, that 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 this, this the suitor is not a suitor but he's actually out to harm her, she wouldn't be getting dressed for him. She'd be leaving. She'd leave. She'd reject. She'd leave the guy, and 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 get rid of him. And, and uh, but I mean, I, this is not really a comment on on domestic violence that I'm trying to make, because we all understand that when people get stuck in a difficult situation, what seems obvious to those that are looking on the outside is not so obvious 
to the people experiencing it on the inside. And it's, it's a similar spiral here. Yes, of course, she should leave. And yes, of course, that's what's supposed to happen. But, um, but, but it's hard to judge because we're not in that person's shoes. The same thing here, the people of Jerusalem <clears throat> were so stuck in this mindset and they had these false prophets that we're talking about that kept on pushing them into this mindset where, no, let's be like them, let's be like them, let's learn from them, let's do this, let's do that. And instead of just getting the message, and sometimes that message is so difficult to hear, it looks so easy when we look from the outside, but from the inside it's so difficult. And therefore we see in the next verse, what am I hearing? I'm hearing the voice of a sick person, but it's specifically as in Kikol Kichola, this is verse 31, the voice that I'm hearing is the sound of a, of a woman who is ill. Shamati Tzora, I hear someone who's screaming in pain, Kimavkiro, like a woman having her first baby. What am I hearing? I'm hearing Kol Bastion, the sound of the daughter of Zion, Tisyapeah, who is, who is just exhausted. And, and Tifores Kapeh, who stretches out her arms in complete and utter exhaustion, constantly getting hurt by everyone around her but unfortunately still not getting the message that she should get, which would be to turn towards God. Oinali, woe is to me, ki This is what she is saying. Woe is to me, ki oifonafshi. My heart is exhausted, lahorgim, because of the killers, the killers that keep coming for me. This abused one keeps getting abused, but still doesn't turn towards God. This is the powerful message of chapter 4. Thank you so much for studying your Mio chapter 4. Looking forward to studying chapter 5 together.